Hey all you crazy kids, welcome back to the Johnny Horror Podcast. I am your host, Johnny Horror, here to introduce the latest episode of our show. About a week and a half back, I had the opportunity and pleasure to interview a friend of mine, Matthew Woods, who is an illustrator and a diehard horror fan. We discussed a variety of subjects, uh, like what got him into horror, uh, what our favorite horror franchises are, and what we are looking forward to in this upcoming year. Hope you guys enjoy listening to the conversation. We had a lot of fun having the conversation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Once again, appreciate you guys. This is the Johnny Horror Podcast. Enjoy. Sir? Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It's good to see you, my guy. You're drinking beer? Yes. I've got uh, doom and gloom. Oh, wow. Oh, that is a great, that's just great art right there. I love that. Yeah, Sam. Well, well, you have anything? Tequila. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, today's my Friday, so uh, I'm letting loose. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Hey, buddy. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time. I'm uh, I'm really excited to get to talk to you finally, like somewhat in person. Yeah, no, <laughs> it feels good. It's good. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, indeed. Um, well, uh, why don't you just uh, for this is going to go on my podcast. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're doing it live now. But um, for those who might be tuning in in the next uh, two weeks or something like that, why don't you just give a little bit of a rundown uh, who you are and what you do and kind of what got you into horror in the first place. All right. Uh, so my name is Matt Woods. Uh, I'm better known around Instagram as Hallow Woods. Uh, I'm an artist and illustrator, and I do, well, it used to be daily, but this, it's more bi-weekly. Yes, uh, get it. I illustrate this uh, pumpkin-headed skeleton named Pumpkinhead, who is not, not me, but like a little <laughs> bit of an allegory. Yeah. It's like a, kind of a representative of a weirdo trying to struggle his way through the uh, doldrums of not Halloween days until it is eventually Halloween. Yes. Um, Outside of that, I'm a huge horror junkie and uh, I started, what got me into horror? I I have two answers. Yeah. I've got uh, one I would say is like John Carpenter's Halloween. Um, Truth be told, it wasn't the first horror movie that hooked me, Um, but it's the one where I was like, oh, like this is something else. I think I get it. Um, What actually hooked me was Scream. It's a basic answer, but like so many, like it's it's a perfect movie. How could I not? It it is uh, arguably like, from from an insider looking out, Scream is a perfect gateway drug to horror. Yes, yes. Uh, I uh, was like 13 or 14 when I first saw it, so it was like actually really scary to me. Yeah. Yeah, I remember like flipping over backwards in the chair I was leaning back on when Drew Barrymore finally gets it. 
And like, I earned no cool points as a 13 year old, like doing something like that. But after that, I was like, tell me everything. I love that. Um, it's funny because I saw Scream roughly uh, about the same age. I think I was about 14. And if I, I remember this correctly, um, we had gone to the video store and me and my me and my buddy and we rented like four different movies um uh halloween scream scream 2 really wanted to rent scream 3 but they didn't have it that i had to wait for like the following week or something like that um and deuce bigelow male gigolo because wow. we needed a little bit of comedy thrown in there <laughs> what a group i know right um but uh, yeah, so I saw Halloween, Scream, and Scream 2 within a 48 hour period. So yeah, it just, like, I changed uh, your DNA. It was, I, I, Scream and Scream 2, like, I could not stop thinking about those movies. And I, I remember, like, seeing, like, poster art for them in like the newspaper and stuff like that back mm -hmm. when like it, they would have that sort of thing in the newspaper when you got newspapers um but uh because uh, when it came out i was like six five or six give or take when uh uh scream came out and i was six uh and scream two i was seven so and, and i had kind of a little bit more strict upbringing so i wasn't allowed to see those until um a few years later and yeah man it, it, i'll tell you what it was a hell of a weekend <laughs> <laughs> you're making me feel old you were six when scream came out uh uh so it came out in 96 and mm -hmm. i am 90 so and it came out in december 96 so i i uh i had just turned six in september so yeah i think uh, i was 11 or 12 when it came out see good for you because you to me when i look at you and this i mean this in the most complimentary way but like you look to me you look younger thank so. you so much i will take all of that you can just like feed me that eager stroke all night 100 percent. yeah so that's that good good for you man because that's <laughs> eventually i mean eventually it catches up to us all but if you can prolong yeah, i'm just trying stage, like to pump the brakes as much as i can absolutely i'm all about it so with that being said, is Scream your favorite horror movie of all time? Yes. I mean, I, how can you forget your first love, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. After, so after that, when I was in high school, my first job was at Hollywood Video, which is like a Perfect. video rental place. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I like kind of became the Randy of my friends. <laughs> That's like I had access to all the movie things and would like bring a stack to every party and oh. stuff like that. And uh, every Tuesday, me and my buddies, JP and Joe, used to have a uh, scary movie Tuesday. So we'd get off the bus after high school and go to Hollywood Video and I would get us videos for free. And we would walk to JP's house because his parents weren't home and <laughs> would watch like scary movies every Tuesday. So that was like the real start of kind of my education. It was all based on like whatever was on the cover, or, like someone said this was gross, so we're gonna get it and that sort of thing. But like it was a, a kind of a like shots in the dark as far as like I didn't watch like the classics first or anything like that. I didn't have someone like guiding me through it. It was kind of like a, an all over the place. I wish I still had the like, the list that we made. I mean, like put stars next to it, but oh, how yeah. we rate it and that, that, that is stuff like that. You just don't think about like, at the time, you're just like, Oh, this is just this is old. This is trash, yeah. whatever. And then you look back in retrospect, you're like, Oh, damn it. I wish I would have kept that because that's something that like would have meaning to me now. Um, I had something similar, like where like who would have ever thought that VHSs would you know be like a hot commodity? 
uh, in this day and age. But I remember, like, I had gotten uh, the, it was like a double VHS, like, for Jaws. One was the, one VHS was the film, and the, the second was the making of the film. Yeah. And, and uh, I loved it, and I watched the hell out of that. And then handful of years later, my dad got me the whatever, I think it was the 35th anniversary or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and it was the DVD. And I was like, well, I don't need this VHS anymore and got rid of it. And it's one of those things. I was like, damn it. What were you thinking, Jonathan? You, you could Because now, now I want that. And yes. I, I like almost bought it a couple of times, but I've, I've pumped the brakes just because you know, I there's always there's always you know Jaws stuff I I must have, and my wife gets a little grumpy with me when I when I buy too much of it. So I uh, I had the it was a two VHS copy of Scream, it, one was Scream, and the other VHS was all of the bonus features that are like on the DVD now. It's like the making of and interviews and all that shit. Oh, cool. But it came in this like clear plastic box that also had a Scream branded prepaid calling card. In no way. Yes, which was like super clever marketing. Like you could use right. it like, yeah, like prank your friends and shit like that. Back when prepaid calling cards were a thing. And I wish I still had that. But of course, I got the DVDs and was like, this is trash. Yeah, yeah. Again, like who knew? And I'm, I mean, I'm not like a crazy like VHS collector by any means. I, I don't even have a VCR, but like, Same. I, I, I think that, you know, to have physical media of your favorite movie in multiple varieties, I, I think that's, that's a, an acceptable thing. In our living room, we have a, um, a dresser. It's like, probably five drawers and it is exclusively our dvd collection dvd and blu-ray at this point yeah we uh, uh we have our guest bedroom and it's our our horror room for uh lack of a better word and um in our in our closet we have like our regular dvds but all of our our horror dvds horror blu-rays they're out on display in in on shelves and whatnot because obviously that's that's the area that we we uh take most pride in uh but i'm glad to hear that you're a fan of physical media as well i, oh, I feel yeah. like a lot of horror fans were kind of the last you know gasp of fans of physical media i feel like well there's so much like there's so much niche stuff that if you don't have it on in physical media, like things come and go from streaming and you don't always have access to, you know, whatever random shit you want to watch at the moment. Yeah. Um, that's so true. But we're, I also feel like we're really fortunate to live uh, in a time where we have stuff like Shudder and Screenbox and to be because they they're the ones that like cultivate like all these random obscure oh, yeah. 80s and 70s horror movies that you, you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else and you can find them on there and watch them and check them out you know like we i've been combing the internet for a physical copy of 976 evil dude it's so hard to find and it's the few that are out there are so expensive mm -hmm. but you can rent it on amazon for 3.99 so that's what we did dude i have the best story about this like it's, it's great because like i saw i was watching your story right before we started and i, mm -hmm. and I saw that like you you posted that and i had been wanting to see that movie for so long <laughs> and i couldn't find it anywhere uh -huh. and then literally just one night i was on the the tv like direct tv you know with tv channels and everything just scrolling through like our movie channels we never watch our direct tv like we always just go to streaming channels but this one random time i was combing through channels and that movie 
was up next. I didn't have time to watch it that night, but I recorded it. And I think wow. I the recording so random, but I just, like, it just like, happened to be playing on TV that night. And it was, you know, uh, uh, like an HBO or Showtime or something like that. So it had the full movie without any cuts or anything like that. And it, it's just luck of the draw. It's a weird one. Uh, uh, it's it is um, fun movie. Though. Yeah, really fun. A lot of fun. Who knew that the concept of a haunted nine hundred number would be so much fun? You know, oh, and that's again, that's one of those things that is so of the era. Oh yeah, because you just don't really have. You can't really explain stuff like that to. To the youngsters these days, they 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 don't really get it, you know. Um, but I mean, New York City just removed its last payphone. Oh no! Gone. They're all gone. That's God. I love like I. Let me let me rephrase this. I don't love payphones. I was always afraid to touch one because I'm oh, a little man. bit of a germaphobe. They they just gross me out. But the. Just, I know how few of them are left, and it's like almost like the last blockbuster. You're just like, no, don't yeah, yeah, take yeah. it away, please. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> um, well, speaking of New York City, and I mean, how long have you lived there, by the way? Uh, I've lived in New York for 18 years. Holy shit. Maybe 17. 17 or 18 we'll years. Up. We'll round up. Yeah, round we'll it up. 18, 18 years. Uh, how, how did that, without getting too much into your personal life, just how did that end up kind of coming about? So I grew, up, I grew up not far from here. I grew up outside of Boston in Massachusetts um, and went to college on Long Island at Hofstra University. I studied... Uh, theater and fine art there. Um, and after that, I wanted to move, I wanted to like move to Scotland. I wanted to do like weird avant-garde theater at the Fringe Festival in Glasgow. Um, and my best friend from college, Steph, she got a job with MTV in New York and she was the one that was gonna move to Glasgow with me. And she called me over the summer and was like, hey, I know we talked about Scotland, but like, how about Manhattan? And I was like, cool, let's do it. And oh. so we moved to New York instead. Hey, that's, that's really great. And then never uh, left. I, I get, like, I, I think it's so cool that you live there. Just, I don't, I don't know anybody. Like, it's just like a movie place to me. Um, Have you ever I, been? I've never been. I've never been. Come visit. Uh, and you know, it's it's one of those. It's definitely on the bucket list. Like, there's there's obviously a million places in the world, and like in the back of your mind, you know, you're never going to get to all of them. But that is one that is very much like I would very much like to um, go to New York. But like for me, I I think for a lot of people, they find out I live in California. And like, oh, California, like, I think it's it's the inverse of that. Like, I find out that you live in New York. I'm like, whoa, that's yeah, cool, man. <laughs> um, I mean, we live in the cool places. Yeah, I, I mean, opposite ends of the spectrum, but they, yeah. they are kind of the, when you think of, like, America, there's California, New York, and Texas. <laughs> So, um, but uh, without getting too off topic, uh, New York, New York City, your favorite movie, Scream. What did you think about, about Scream 6? Truthfully, mm -hmm. I really liked it. I know I that like there's like, there's been a lot of back and forth of, of popular opinion as to whether it's like total shit or awesome. I like a movie that goes off the rails a little bit. And this like took one step closer to off the rails. And I appreciate that. It like kind of felt like Scream 
three does in a way. Mm -hmm. They were like, let's get weird. I, uh, I agree. Um, and I'll just, you know, do a disclaimer. If you haven't seen Scream 6, if you were excited to see Scream 6 and you haven't seen it, maybe, you know, you can fast forward the video here a little <laughs> bit, but, because uh, we'll get into some spoilery territory. But, um, yeah, the movie is a little, a little wild, um, particularly uh, the killers. Uh, dude, uh, Dermot Mulroney, like him, once he, it's revealed he's the killer, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? What drugs did he take? Because he's yeah, yeah, like yeah. bonkers. I feel like he was going for like a uh, like a Debbie Salt, Mrs. Loomis vibe. One hundred percent. I I do like it. I it is this weird thing though that I I've, I've noticed that, that, and I mean I'm saying I noticed like like it's you know not in the zeitgeist but that all the killers the minute they're revealed as the killers they just lose their fucking minds they just go uh ape shit um and as much as i liked his wackiness i do think it would have been a little bit more interesting had he just they just played it all three of them just played it very straight face like yeah mm -hmm. no we're just we're just avenging our brother because like you you killed him and it didn't have to be this like over the top like ah we're insane yeah, yeah it gets a little cartoony thing. um i like i have fun with it because the the dumber movies get the more i tend to be forgiving of the nonsense i'm like, like all right we're just having fun at this point and that's why we go to the movies is to have fun um but i do you think it loses a little bit of its edge with that and with the fact that no main character dies in Scream yeah. 6? That's my issue with, uh, it's the opposite issue that I, oh, nope, same issue with Scream 4. They introduce, introduce a whole bunch of new characters, kill them all. Yeah. None of the main ones get hurt. Yeah, um, that is, that is, I remember coming out of Scream 4 and feeling like they had missed the mark on something. And I really liked Scream 4. I really liked Scream 4 a lot. Probably my least favorite. Okay, okay. And that's, that's, and I, I, I understand that. <laughs> I totally get, I totally get the gripes. The reason I like Scream 4 so much uh, um, is be because of the reveal of the killer. Mm -hmm. I, was not anticipating that at all. I think it's. I think it is the smartest reveal of the killer, or the smartest killer. You know, um, uh, even more so than uh, Billy Loomis, um, just because you've you've done everything right to make us think that Jill is our heroine, and so when it is revealed, I was like, no fucking way right. so it's that, like putting the killer in the final girl position yeah and I, I i thought that was incredibly clever and i like uh the reasoning behind it and everything i think their original ending where they leave it very ambiguous whether or not uh sydney lives or dies and jill essentially gets away with it that was originally what the film how it was supposed to end um i think that's that would have been fantastic um, there would have been like fan revolt. Are you kidding? Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely it would have. Absolutely it would have. Um, but if anybody deserves to make it out of this series alive, it's Sydney. She's she's paid her dues. Um, but I I felt the same way that they played it too safe in Scream Four. Um, I think in. Scream 5, most people knew that Dewey was going to die. I don't think it it, it just kind of made sense. Yeah, I figured one of them was going to go, but I couldn't decide if it was going to be uh, Gail or Dewey. Yeah. Honestly, I thought she was going to go in this one. I had a moment there where I thought they were going to do it, and it kind of goes back to the, the Sydney thing where I'm like, guys, just 
leave them alone. It's they they've earned their they've earned their their peace. They have, you know. Yeah. Um, and I. I, I like Courtney Cox. I think she does. She does good. Even I don't think she needed to be in this movie at all. The, the story, anything that she does in the story could have been done by uh, somebody else. You know, the discovery of the the vault of uh, for sure fab stuff. But, but she but, is like part of the tie to New York, so yeah. like yeah. it does make sense that someone would be after her if it were taking place. So, with all that said, I apologize. I, I went off on a tangent and rambled a little bit. But what what are some of your 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 highlights that make that make you um, that made you enjoy Scream Six so much? Um, my favorite scene is the latter scene. <laughs> Fantastic! It's so absurd. No one in New York has that. We, it does, that doesn't fit in anyone's apartment. A telescoping ladder is absurd, and I love it. Like, that is purely the invention of the circumstance in this movie. He, like, pulled it from thin air. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, See, yeah, no, stuff like that to me, like, I would have no idea, you know? But that, yeah. that does make sense, absolutely. Like, you could probably probably fit my apartment three times in your house. Well, it is. Yeah. I mean, I I know how big my house is, and I know I have a general idea of how, like, just what apartments there look like. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, what made me, uh, like, made my stomach turn a little bit, like, kind of made me uncomfortable is the bodega scene, because mm -hmm. that sh actually happens. Like, the week before this movie came out, a man was sh in a bodega by a dude in a Yeah, yeah that's terrifying. So, like, it, that, that, that sort of thing was like, ah, this is a little close to home. I actually live there. You know, yeah. Like, Canada, but, you know, it's like the idea of it. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I mean that that is that is your home. So like you you've lived there long enough that it's your home, and you, I imagine you know more or less the ins and outs of of uh, a good chunk of where you live. So I I do wonder like this. Yeah, obviously all of this was shot in Vancouver or something like that, right? Uh, Scream 6, I believe. Um, Uh-oh, you're frozen. There you go. Ooh, there my go. back. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there you are. You're good. Right. Um, does, how much of it feels like real New York City? They did a pretty good job. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the, like the subway, very, uh, very much like the subway, except that the lights don't go out in a subway car nearly as much as they do in the movie. And uh, I, I, you know, I believe that 100%. That being said, uh, I think uh, aesthetically, it was one of my favorite parts, how they were able to use yes. the lighting flickering to cut between the, the two separate uh, trains. I thought that was, uh, that was, but yeah, that definitely seems like a, a spooky movie sort of thing that yeah. they were doing. And I can tell you that Halloween in New York is a big thing. And so the subway being full of people like in costume is very accurate. I, uh, uh, that actually makes me very, very happy. Yeah, the Halloween parade in New York, I think is the biggest in the country. That's insane. Yeah, it's, it's wild. It's fun and overwhelming. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm incredibly jealous that you have stuff like that. We don't like really have, you have to 
to drive everywhere in California. So you don't really get uh, like big groups of people like walking and going places mm -hmm. too often. Uh, if you do, it's weird and sometimes scary. So, <laughs> uh, well, what, how, how do you rank the, the screen movies then? If, uh, what, what, where do they, where do they line up for you? I was just gonna, I was actually gonna ask you this question. Um, for me, it is one, two, three, six, five, four. Nice. Very nice. That's solid. I don't I think I'm I'm too far off. I I I think I'm at one two. Um, four and three are I, I, they're really interchangeable. I think at this <laughs> point, I, the my last rewatch of three, I really really had fun with it. I had a really good time with it. And that's Parker a movie that I... Lizzie makes it for me. Oh, she she is the best part of that film. And if she can get stabbed like once in the stomach or something like that, and, <laughs> and, and everybody else who gets stabbed in the stomach and Scream 6 comes back to life, there's no reason why she can't, you know... Bring her back. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Just, we're, 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 we're almost becoming the the... Fast and the Furious franchise at this yeah. point, where just everyone dies, and you know what? Well, fuck it, we'll just bring it back. <laughs> um, it was puncture. Uh, but um, yeah, so I'll probably I'll I'll say this. I'll do one, two, four, three, six, and five. One, two, four, three, six, five. Yeah, five at the end. I, wow. Okay. I, and. The the first couple of times I watched it, I was not a fan. I have watched it, listened to podcasts on it, watched it with a commentary, and I understand a lot of the, their ideas and stuff like that and why they did what they did. It's, so much of it feels redundant to me. Um, so much of it feels like stuff that we did in one and four, and now we're going back to the Stu's house, and we have the copycat killers doing the same sort of thing i just it felt so mundane uh so much of it um that i i was just like dude i'm watching the same movie again for the third time almost um but i love jack quaid i thought he was so good in that um uh, the hospital scene is great. I think Dewey, old man Dewey is great. Um, I love Dewey, but he needed to go. And um, I think he went out like a champ. That being said, my biggest gripe with that film is that there is no him. possible way that Amber could kill Dewey. I'm sorry, just doesn't make any fucking sense. And we would have given her plausible deniability, except that she says it. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Outright says it. And that was like my one thing. I was like, if for some reason they bring back Stu in, in six and they say that he was the one that killed Dewey, I was like, I'll forgive everything. Sure. Uh, but it didn't make sense for Stu to come back in six. There, There's just... There's no reason for that whatsoever. And the, the more I watched Six, I was like, oh, yeah, there's no... The, why would they bring Stu back? It has, this has nothing to do with Stu. My so, guess that Six was going to be about a cult and that we were going to get lots of different killers again and again and again. They were just going to, like, be dispatched by, like, the cast and be like, what is happening? When does this stop? Yeah. Until we got to Stu as, like, an imprisoned cult leader or something like yeah. that. I will... I mean, and I would have loved that. I think it is a little, like, a little too wacky. But I know that a lot of a lot of us fans were kind of hoping for something along those lines. I know I was. And, I mean, the, the beginning where they reveal the killer, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. We're going to know who at least one of the killers is for the bulk of the film. I thought that was a great idea. And, obviously, he's dispatched very quickly. But they, they, they... They definitely flirt with some good ideas, but they just yeah. never go 
balls deep. They make the joke about Stu, too. Yeah, yeah and it's it was bad. Really, the minute that they said it, I was like, all right, cool. He's definitely, that's, that's, that's it. That's them that's saying, not. yeah, no, he's, this is, this is nonsense, basically. So, um, although I know that they paid um, Matthew Lillard for Scream 2, at least, and I think Scream 3, because he was, like, originally written into one or both of them yeah. as, like, still being alive and ended up scrapping it because, like, one of those, like, leaked on the internet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I definitely remember that for sure uh, being something that they threw around for part, part three. Um, and, you know, oh, God. As I I don't I don't like the the brother reveal I I don't actually I don't even mind the brother reveal I don't like the idea that Roman was the mastermind behind the the that is kind of my biggest gripe with that film I'm like no Billy and Stu they they did that don't take that away from from them you know um, don't rewrite history yeah exactly I I'm not a fan of that. Um, unless you can like make it make sense in a way that's justifiable, and I don't, I don't think that was. Um, well, well, that is scream. We have <laughs> Evil Dead coming up in the next like week and a half or something like that. Uh, are you a fan of the Evil Dead franchise? Um. So, I I have never seen beyond evil dead three okay so uh, i've seen the tv show but i didn't see the remake okay all right, all right. um I that's own okay it but on you... dvd and never watched it i fucking love that really? movie really i do um i know that a lot of you know maybe old school uh horror folks maybe don't feel the same way, but I probably rewatched the, the the remake with with the exception of Army of Darkness, I've watched the remake more than I've watched Evil Dead One or Evil Dead Two. Um it it's a weird like comfort horror movie for me and it's a really weird thing to say because it is fucked up. That's in all... why I haven't watched it. It looks so so violent. It, it is very, very violent. Um, yeah. Incredibly, incredibly violent. Um, but, God, it's, I, I don't know, man. To me, it's a horror fan's wet dream. Like, it's right. scary. Um, it's gruesome. Weird, weirdly comedic, not unlike the original Evil Dead. Very, very, like, dark, dark humor sprinkled throughout. Um, and just a really fucking badass ending. So, I... I We'll charge you to uh, to watch that film because it I I think it's pretty great. All that said, are you excited for the new one or are you hesitant, not interested, just because you haven't continued past the the original trilogy? Uh, hesitant because I haven't continued past the original trilogy. Um, I love the TV show. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's just Bruce Campbell is I know. a national treasure. So. So I, the other thing is like, he is the big draw to Evil yeah. Dead for me. And so I'm not, I don't know that I'm particularly interested in seeing a different version, even though I know it's wholly different. It is not like Bruce Campbell, Evil Dead. It is far more serious. It is far more violent, like you said, and maybe makes it uh, actually scary instead of silly scary. Yeah. Um, I myself am more the silly scary type. Like Friday the 13th part seven with Tina the telekinetic is my favorite one. That's your favorite one? That's my favorite one. Oh man, how exciting. I know that that's, that's kind of like a, a, that can be considered a more maligned sequel. It definitely is, but I, it's so much fun. It's so goofy. I mean, I've always, I've, that's always one that for a long time I hadn't, I kind of seen almost all of them, but it was all like in bits and parts. So they all blended together mm -hmm. and I could never remember like what number each one was. I 
just always remember, like, I was like, somewhere in the middle there, there's a gal that is telekinetic, and that's really weird. <laughs> really weird. She uh, raises Jason from the lake with her mind by yeah. accident. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me because you have that, and then, you know, the, the very next sequel, you have them leaving Crystal Lake on a boat to go through the Atlantic Ocean, and we're 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 just we're just jumping all over the place in this mm -hmm. franchise. But I, dude, those movies are just those movies are are so much fun. Um, while we're kind of on this topic, outside of Scream, would what what is your favorite what is your favorite franchise? This is a hard question. Mm -hmm. Um. So I talked about Halloween briefly before. Mm -hmm. I love Halloween 1, 2, and 3. I love Halloween 1, 2, and 3. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like you might, you might be uh, not a fan of the rest of the franchise. I mean, it's... <sighs> It's a oh. lot of them are not good. Yeah, a lot of them. I, uh, I would say most of them are not yeah, good. Yeah, like the one. What's the one with Paul Rudd? Uh, Curse in the nineties. Yeah, it hardly makes sense. Like I, the introduction of the cult, uh, and like uh, I like when things go off the rails. But Halloween is so such a beautiful movie that I almost feel offended by some of the later ones. I, um, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll make my case yeah. here. Uh, yeah. The, the Halloween franchise is my favorite horror franchise. Like, start to finish, I can find something with the exception of Halloween Resurrection, which is absolute trash. I've watched it once, I'll never watch it again. Um, it, Oh, uh, probably the worst horror sequel. Of I mean, the trick or treat, time. motherfucker. Uh, yeah, and I mean, yeah, probably the worst horror sequel of all time. And I've seen Silent Night, Deadly Night two multiple times. Love Silent Night, Deadly Night two. I love that movie. Gar um, <laughs> garbage day. Um, but my favorite podcast that I listen to are are these group of guys called Halloweenies. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Halloweenies, and they go through different horror franchises, and they uh, talk about each movie. It, it's fascinating. I love them. Um, and they did, they did the Halloween franchise. And when they got, got to Curse of Michael Myers, their argument, and they had it rated really high. Like not like not like it's a great, amazing movie, but the the. The fact that everything that had come before, you had Halloween, Halloween 2, uh, we're not counting Halloween 3 in this in this specific bit, but you have 4 and 5 that introduces the man in black and the, the thorn symbol. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So their, their argument is that the people behind Halloween, Curse of Michael Myers, in order to keep all the continuity, just had do the best that they can and what they were able to kind of come up with to make sense of everything that had come before they, was to try and you're trying to stick this. with the yeah because because when they when they introduced the man in black in Halloween five they had no no one had any idea who this character was. No not the director, not the writer, not the producer. They're like just throw this guy in here. We need a hook to get people yeah. to come back. I'm like, all right, cool. Who is he? We don't know. They'll figure that out in the next movie. So, so the writer had to come up with a reason for all of these things to make sense and to try and keep everything um, it, within the continuity. And that's a, a damn near impossible job. So with that lens, I give... I, I give a lot of grace to Curse of Michael Myers. Is it a good film? No. Is it a fun film? I I have 
on this last rewatch, enjoyed it quite a bit. It it feels Halloween to me, and I think that's that's why I like the Halloween franchise so much. Is just the feeling of Halloween. I I appreciate the curse of Michael Myers for its like '90s industrial aesthetic, yes. which is like something outside of anything that it, they had done before. Yeah. Um, and I think I misspoke. I like Halloween 1 through 3 and H2O. It, well, if you take Halloween 1, 2, and H2O, as far as I'm concerned, you have a perfect trilogy right there. Right. Yeah, agreed. Um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense how anyone survives that explosion. Uh, but uh, I... I, I I agree. H two O is is a hell of a lot of fun, and um, arguably a better end to Laurie's story than what we got with the um, the uh, David Gordon Green trilogy. So I appreciated what they were going for in the newest ones, the David Gordon Green trilogy. Um, I really liked twenty eighteen, and I. I felt medium about the other ones. Um, I appreciate the uh, the creativity. Yeah. Even though it left me unsatisfied, if that makes any sense. Uh, uh, no, it, it totally does. I don't think... Um, I've talked to a couple of people about this. Out of the three, 2018 has... I really, really liked that movie the first couple of times I saw it, even though I had some issues with it. It's it's slowly worked it, its way down. Um, Halloween Kills is kind of the type of stuff that we were talking about before, where it's just balls to the walls nonsense. Like it's just absurd. Yeah. Um, it's slightly frustrating how almost not serious it takes itself. Um. But I gotta, I gotta be honest. I, I really, really like Halloween Ends. I'm so fascinated by the decisions in that in that movie. Um, I'm reading the novelization right now uh, wow. to kind of get a little bit more of it. I really like Corey Cunningham. I think he's he's a very interesting protagonist. I'm perplexed by the decision to bring this character into the third and final film um, of this trilogy. I think it would have been better to sprinkle him in earlier. You could have had a little bit more pathos uh, for his character and his journey. All that being said, I I do think Halloween Ends is going to end up being like Halloween 3 status. It's just like, yeah. it's the it's what the awesome. fuck, you know? Was it... I can't remember if it was you or someone else that said that they would have done themselves a great service if they had titled it like Halloween 3, and they called it Halloween colon, The Babysitter Murders. Uh, that was not me, but that's, that's genius. Yeah. Because the original title for the original Halloween was The Babysitter Murders. Yeah. And this babysitter, maybe, maybe not, kills a kid in the very opening scene. Yeah. Um... No, I agree. I it's it, I I don't know, man. It's just I think to me personally, it's the best of those three films. It's just it, it's just beholden to the other two films that came before, and that's that's the problem with it is that 2018 and Kills are building up Lori Michael, Lori Michael, Lori Michael. You tell me, and we push them. So far to the periphery that you're like, yeah. what movie are we watching? Um, but anyways, I digress. Um, I didn't answer your question. Halloween is not my favorite franchise. What is, is it? I think it is, I mean, outside of Scream, I think it's Friday the 13th. I'm not a huge Jason fan, but like the icon as uh, like the ma the Jason mask as an icon for horror is like uh, there's nothing else that compares like anyone on earth sees that mask and knows exactly what it means and the, the movies get 
so silly and so fun and so schlocky that I can't help but like, I don't know, I swoon for Jason, I guess, sometimes. Uh, and I, I agree with that. It's a franchise that I've only really started to appreciate in probably the last year. I've always liked it, again, more aesthetically than anything else. It's just like, oh, yeah, Jason, he's, he's part of the crew, you know? And he has so many movies. Like, how could you not just appreciate the fact that that franchise exists? Um, but, but in really doing due dil my due diligence and watching from start to finish every single movie within probably like a two to three month period, I was like, no, these movies are actually a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, even the ones that are not great. Are, they're not good. They're fun. They're st still fun, you know? And you're 100% right. The The hockey mask is the horror version of the Superman symbol. You mm -hmm. show that to anyone and anyone across the globe, and they know who he is yep. and what he does. Um, that's a solid answer. Uh, and, I mean, obviously, he, uh, Jason does make uh, appearances in your artwork as well. Um, I appreciate it. Halloween, uh, Friday the 13th feels like a little sip of Halloween. It points throughout the year. Every time it comes around, like it's Friday the 13th. Yes. A little bit of Halloween. I, <laughs> I'm always, I'm really envious of people because I'm, I'm, I'm a bartender by trade. So I, I'm always working on Fridays. <laughs> and so I was like, Hey dude, happy Friday the 13th. You're a horror guy. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. I'm working. That's when uh, people people be drinking on Fridays, man. Yep. Um, but before we got to wrap, because the, the the Instagram live thing is only like an hour long, yeah. so eats you after a while. Uh huh. Before we uh, we wrap this up, two questions for you. Uh, first being, what horror movie are you most looking forward to that is coming out? this year we I, there's there's a whole slew of them so does anything stand out to you uh so i think the one i'm looking forward to most i has already come out and i haven't seen it yet i've not seen cocaine there oh no I know. oh but man that movie looks so silly wild and so fun yeah i uh, I laughed my head off. Yeah, I, I had so much fun. Um, yeah, no, I I definitely recommend that if you if you can get good and liquored up before you watch it, you're you're just in for a treat. Also, Renfield, right? Renfield is coming. Yes, yeah, no, that, I think that comes out this weekend actually. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. It looks. I love what we do in the shadows, and it looks like not outside of that vein. It, it very much has, like, the same aesthetic. I don't know if it's, like, the lighting or whatever they're doing. I don't know what it is. It's got that, that fun, you know, silly vampire thing going on for sure. I've got to say, I'm a fan of Nick Cage, but he looks like he plays a great overlord vampire. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think he's going to do just fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I kind of like this idea of uh, Renfield, even though it's, it borders on, like, silly action stuff, but I think that's kind of the point where, like, yeah. he gets, like, superpowers from, like, eating the bugs or whatever. Like, that's a fun little twist uh, sure. on, on the classic lore. Why not? And uh, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Holt does a great job in anything he's in, so... There's uh, a bunch of um, pictures in the new Fangoria of... The movie and it also looks like it is a bloody good time yeah I, I i it looked very like just the trailers you could tell just like how they're cutting it and whatnot that you're like oh they're they're there's much more way. there's a lot of gore in there um uh I, finally just basically like i know you're a busy guy you're always you're always doing artwork uh you you do your calendar every year, which I fucking love. Um, I just I'm always so excited to to flip and see what the next month is going to be. Um, 
because your your designs and everything that you do with pumpkin head is just it's it's really creative and it's just fun and my wife loves it too um what what do you have on the chopping block what what what's uh creatively speaking where what do you have planned out for this year if you can give any details yeah yeah i mean the calendar is a big project um that'll be the next one will be coming at 100 days till Halloween, which is in the end of July. Gotcha. Um, I'm not close to finishing it, so <laughs> I have that to do. Um, I also have a, I have a solo art show scheduled for the middle of July. So I'm working on that. It's um, not Halloween stuff. It is here. I have a thing right here. I'm making like uh, cardboard. Oh, wow. Animals. They're all going to be New York City themed. So I've got like a bunch of pigeons. I've got squirrels, rats, cockroaches, raccoons, that sort of thing. That's great. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But it is, of course, running concurrently with my other big project, the calendar. Yes. Um, and other than that, like mostly little ghost auctions here and there on Instagram and the usual the usual fire yeah yeah i i get it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and i'm assuming you have a day job mixed in there somewhere soon. yeah so i like you i bartend oh hell yeah i did not know that really yeah no that's awesome yeah i've been a bartender for like 20 years holy shit <laughs> oh man you could probably teach me some stuff i've only been doing it for 10 <laughs> i uh i've worked in like Italian restaurants, clubs, swanky cocktail bars. Right now I work in a, like a craft beer bar, I, like 24 taps. It's so much easier than cocktails. I was going to say, that's got to be so chill uh, in comparison to working like at a fucking club or something like that. All right. So I worked at a club when I was like 18 years old. It was very different. I was super into it. I went to work at 10 p.m. Oof. Can't Oof. do that today no no not even a little bit uh but the beer bar that i work at is right across the street from columbia university so all of the people that come in are like 21. <laughs> so i could very well be their dad <laughs> like dude they're so young it's crazy that's again just like it's it's crazy to me that like again like it's it's crazy to me that you are as old as you say you are because again you don't look it. It's crazy to me that you've been bartending for twenty fucking years, man. That's that's incredible. God God bless you. I uh, I also love to... that I still get hit on by kids. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's that's I mean that's one of the the fun parts of the job. It's a little uh, ego boost. I mean you know everyone wants to sleep with the bartender. You know. <laughs> We're we're both married, but you know it's, it's nice to get a little yeah. you know positive yeah. reinforcement from outside the 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 household. You know, I will take your adoration. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we're gonna have to Matt. You know, we're we're gonna have to do one of these and and swap uh, bartending stories next time because that actually that's one of my favorite things to to shoot the shit about. So, um, wait before we go, I have a question for you. Yeah. Why Jaws? Uh, uh, Jaws, not unlike what you said with, with Halloween and Scream. I saw Jurassic Park when I was about four years old. Mm -hmm. Fell in love with dinosaurs. Didn't quite understand movie making exactly. I just knew that I wanted to, to be a part of whatever was happening in Jurassic Park. When I saw Jaws, I saw the making of Jaws before I saw the actual movie. Mm -hmm. My dad put on the making before he put on the movie. Like a genius. Uh, so I went into Jaws having everything spoiled for me, but I got to see behind the scenes and really understand that like at the age of 10, really be able to comprehend what movie making was. That's cool. And I don't know. It's aesthetically pleasing to me. I'm mm -hmm. still very much afraid of that shark in that movie. Um, I don't know. It's it, it's just it's it's a perfect film for me. It's 
perfect cinematically um and it's a perfect story of like how to make how to make a movie at with you know impossible odds yeah. so but, but um yeah uh we're about to run out of time my friend i appreciate you uh hey, yeah taking a chunk out of out of your evening to chat with me this has been a lot of fun i, I really enjoyed it um uh, Matt, just b before you go, uh, where can our listeners find you on socials? Uh, uh, pretty much only on Instagram. It's like the only thing that I use. Uh, it's Hallow Woods. Hallow, like Halloween, and Woods, like tree. Two W's in the middle. Perfect. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you, my friend. I hope you have a great evening, and uh, I will talk to you soon, all right? Stay weird. Right back at you, buddy. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.